It means he had really listened to them. Is that not so? Brethren, watch. Yesterday we had Jesus saying, Take it so that the light in you be not darkness. When they remove the cross from the gospel, the gospel that is supposed to be light, what has it become? What has it become? The gospel without the cross is darkness. It's a deceit. It's, it's an evil. We, you see, it took time. Some of us were confused to the point of saying, God, what is happening? Is it that the gospel is no more powerful? Why are people attending meetings? They are not converted. People will pray all night. They are not converted. I will begin to seek God. And the Lord began to draw attention to this thing. One of the things revelation God gave us, I put in that book also, is that in any medicine, there's an active ingredient. Is that so? Every ingredient is important. Without it, that medicine is not complete. But there is an active ingredient that attacks the disease directly. The part of the gospel that attacks the problem of your heart is not the miracle aspect. It is the cross. If the gospel you receive has been doctored, modified, edited to remove the, the cross, your heart can never be circumcised. You cannot change. You cannot be transformed. You can be in church for years. You will not be a new creation. Watch. Watch. The other thing we are told, pray. The Bible says, Jesus said, pray. He said, watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to escape those things that happen. We are at a perilous time. Except you pray, you will not escape. I'm not talking only to young Christians. I'm talking to us who know we are older Christians. I'm talking to those that have been Christians before we were born. Except you watch, you will not stand. The devil is wiser than the wisest among us. Watch and pray. Pray! Pray, begging God, pleading with him. Pray as if on that alone depends your salvation. Pray. The prayer you pray today will carry you tomorrow. Hallelujah. Don't let prayer be emergency. You have problem today, you begin to pray now. It's too late. Pray. 
As if on that depends your salvation. These are attitudes. Yes, we must pray for ourselves. But I want to end Feel on prayer. We must pray for the body, the church. I started by reminding you that the Bible says the tabernacle of David is in ruin. But the Lord said, what did the Lord say? What did the Lord say? What did the Lord say? I will return. Look, I love that portion. I will return. We must pray. The Lord will return. Surely, it is a matter of time. He will return. He will return. But as I was thinking of this meeting, I want us also to learn, to, to borrow from those that went ahead of us. When, how they reacted, how they prayed, when they were under the perils of attacks. Let me turn to, let's turn to Psalm 44 first. Psalm 44. Psalm 44 is a situation that demands prayer. A situation where the people of God prayed. What prompted their prayer in Psalm 44? Let me begin to read from verse 1. We have heard with our ears, O oh God, our fathers told us what work you did in their days, in the times of old. How you drove out the heathen with your hand, and you planted them, and how you afflicted the people and cast them out. They got the land in possession, not by their own sword, nor by their own arm. Not that their arm saved them, but your right hand and your arm and the light of your countenance because you have favor unto them. These were the children of God. They are saying that they had what God did in the past. But what they read, what their fathers told them, about the acts of God in the past seem to be different from what they were expecting. That is a subject of prayer. When the people of God will say, testimonies of the past we were hearing, what we are reading in the word of God, they are different from what we are seeing today. It means they should pray. These people recognize that their fathers told them what God used to do. But it seemed as if God is no more doing those things. And they began to pray. In fact, when they got to verse 9, they said, You have cast us off. You have put us to shame. And you do not go out again with our armies. You have made us to turn our back from the enemy. And those that hate us spoil us for themselves. You have given us like sheep to the appointed for the meat. And you have scattered us among the hidden. What their fathers told them is different from what they are going through. And they pray. How do they pray? When they got 
to verse 23. Awake! Why sleepest thou, O Lord? Arise. Cast us not off forever. We go to verse 26. Arise! For our help. And redeem us for your mercy's sake. The people of God, they knew what God used to do. And they are saying, what God used to do, what people used to recount about God, is different from what we are saying. And they made it a reason to pray. My brethren, do we have reasons to pray? Do we have? When it seems as if God is not with us, as he used to be with those that recounted it to us, shouldn't we pray? It is not a one-time prayer. It is a body of prayer we must carry until God returns. Will he return? Will God return? Will he return? He will return to build again the tabernacle of David that has fallen. To repair the ruins thereof and to set it up. And when he will have done that, what will happen? What will happen? The residue of men shall begin to seek him. Shall we not pray? When we hear some of the attacks on us, we saw the scriptures and we found people before us. They have gone through such times of peril. Please turn to Psalm 74. Psalm 74. And somebody that is still very strong come and help me to read. Somebody can come and help me to read it here from the microphone. Nobody is zealous enough to come and help me to read. Okay, yes, please. Can we have a second microphone? Or oh, we have only one. Okay, we can manage it. Start reading from Basel. Psalms 74. O God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Why doth thy anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thy inheritance, which thou hast redeemed. This Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt, lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations. Even all that the enemy had done wickedly in the sanctuary. From the verse 4 down, listen very well. You will see them now recounting the kind of things that the enemies, insurgents, this to them. They seem to me not different from what we are going through. But they prayed. Verse 4. Thy enemies run in the midst of thy congregations. They set up their ensigns for signs. A man was famous according as he had lifted up asses upon the thick trees. But now they break down the carved work thereof at once with asses and hammers. They have cast fire into thy sanctuary. 
They have defied by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. They have burnt up all the synagogues of God in the land. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there among us any that know it how long. O oh God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? While we drawest down thy hand, even thy right hand. Pluck it out of thy bosom. Can you see what the people of God at that time went through? Their synagogues burnt down. The decorations of the temple destroyed. Their places of worship cast to the ground. But you know something that amazed me positively. After they have recounted those things, the verse that follow before they begin to pray. Verse 12. For God, my king of old, walking salvation in the midst of the earth. Do you know, no matter how much they destroy us, no matter how much they destroy the synagogues, our churches, no matter how much they cast our places down to earth, God is looking for how to use all those things to work salvation. In the midst of all those things, God is still working salvation. Is God working salvation in Nigeria? Is he working salvation in Adamawa State? Is he working salvation in Taraba? Is he working salvation in Borno, in Gombe? Even if you have not seen it now, the people of all that went ahead of us, when they narrated, they said, look, before, they thought that axes were to be used to break down trees, but they were using it to break down the things in our temple. They were using it to destroy our synagogue. But in all this burning and destruction, they say, for God is my king of old. What does he do? He's working salvation in the midst of the earth. Is God working salvation? Is he working salvation? We are saying that he will come. Could it be that those things need to happen to make his coming to happen faster? He will come. As we look at all that is happening, let us know that others have overcome. Hallelujah. They have overcome. Similar things had happened. And they overcame. They prayed. And they overcame. And let us be comforted. Because God said, I shall return. Actually, from what we have been saying, the church is part of the problem. It is because the tabernacle of David has fallen to ruins that men are not seeking God. And we see it in Nigeria. We know people, the reason why they stopped going to church is because of what they saw in churches. A man who two daughters were impregnated by the same pastor does she not have a reason to stop going to church? A woman that discovered that the pastor was sleeping with her and with her daughter. And you say, stop going to church. 
a woman was saying, I read it that she was a virgin until she started going to church. She had kept herself. It was in the church that she lost that that was precious to her. What she was able to keep in spite of the world, she lost in the church. Not only that she lost it, she contacted AIDS in the church. Yes, why is that happening? Because the tabernacle baby has fallen. But the Lord shall return. So let us have a sober and a balanced mind over the matter of perilous times. So that we don't just cast the blame on others. We have our part of responsibility. The tabernacle is falling. But the Lord says, what has he said? I will return. Let us stand up and begin to pray. Let us stand up and begin to pray. You first pray for yourself. In this very lost time, help me to have the correct attitude. In this very lost time, I need grace. I have learned to be conscious of your soon coming. I have learned to watch. I have learned to be sober. I have learned to be prayerful. Father, help me. Begin to call on the name of the Lord. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus.